All right, what I want to talk to you guys about is how much our industry is changing. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this internet thing, but it evolves quite rapidly, and so does this WordPress world that we're in. And so all we're going to do is reflect on a long list with the time that we have of some of the things that are no longer applicable in our lives and some of the things that also are on their way out. First, uh, I sent out a tweet the other day asking people like, to give some suggestions uh, on Twitter. Like, what, what do you include in this list? I'm working on a presentation. You guys have ideas. I can't remember everything. Uh, suggest some things. So Adam, he uh, jokingly said that Facebook maybe is on its way out. Um, Chris, uh, let him change his <laughs> privacy for sure. All right, hot take. Um, Matt Trask chimed in and said, My, anybody remember MySpace? The good old days of social, social media. Um, Megan here uh -huh. chimed in with GSC. These are a lot of the great developers of, the, of today cut their teeth with web design. Uh, Kevin Hoffman chimed in with Blab, a very short-lived uh, media platform. I never really got into it, but I'm kind of a late adopter of a lot of technologies. How many people used Blab? Nobody here used it even at all? I mean, it was a big deal. It's not anymore. I don't so. even know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it was a thing, I promise. Uh, Gabe chimed in kind of uh, wishing that clickbait was on its way out. But <laughs> it's, it's not. Sorry. Sorry. I wish. I said that anybody who develop, figures out a way to make clickbait businesses not make money uh, would, should have a statue built in their honor. Um, and uh, Megan also chimed in the, the links feature. You guys remember links in WordPress? Oh, yeah. That was the thing. Yeah, in the early days of WordPress, uh, it was all about blogging, and sometimes you would want to list like recommended other blogs or links to check out on your sidebar. Blog and so roll. your blog, blog roll. roll. Yeah, that was a big deal in the early days. And WordPress, you know, in your admin menu, you would have posts and comments and pages and appearance and, and links. And this is still one of the very few user-facing features that WordPress has ever gutted and taken out. Uh, WordPress isn't really in the practice very often of removing features. That's quite rare. The links was taken out a few years ago. Let's start with just a fun, quick reflection. We're just like doing a drive-by stroll through the graveyard of the internet and seeing what we see on a few headstones, like Flash, for example, the glory days, like when the internet really was at its peak, is when we had Flash websites, right? Right? Uh, nobody, nobody misses those. I, I do miss like the passion that some of my clients had for websites back then, because I had a few clients who I made Flash websites for, and they just were over the moon for their websites. They thought they were so cool. All the little animations and the little sounds that everything makes, and, and the little butterflies that fly and follow your cursor, and those were the customers who uh, didn't want their website to change, and um, it was just a weird time. Uh, <laughs> hit counters were fun in the early days. Everybody had those in their photo, right? I had a client that asked me to put a hit counter Really? <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> I would love to hear. I would love to hear them describe like how they think it contributes, uh, uh, what use it plays. Um, Oh, oh make them see. When it is zero. Yeah. 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 First, yeah, like write his testimonials for him too. It's not gonna work out. It's not gonna work out. It's not gonna work out. Mobile sites were a thing for a little while, uh, but they turned out to be kind of like the Betamax and responsive design as VHS, uh, or some other comparison where they were competing technologies and mobile sites lost. Uh, these were where like you would be on a mobile device and go to a website and get kind of redirected to the mobile version of the website, like m.dominos.com or something. Uh, but now it's just better to create websites that look good on all devices, and it's the same website. Uh, marquees were super fun. You know, Ross was really a big proponent of marquees in the day. Uh, he still is. <laughs> Remember when search engines were really easy to manipulate? Wasn't that so much fun? We kind of miss those days. Like you just need to know a few tricks, and you can you can fool the search engines and get your site ranking whenever you want. And then the most insidious uh, trend that ever took place on the internet. One of the worst things, the worst cultural experiments that I think uh, we've ever been through. Top friends. I hated that. I think that was the one of the worst things that our society has ever been through. Is just top friends. Like the idea of publicly ranking our friends. Uh, that was so stupid. 
and so terrible, and I'm so glad that we've been through and passed it completely. Let's talk a little bit now about some of the things that have more recently become irrelevant. Uh, post formats, kind of like links, it's another thing that WordPress took out. WordPress uh, kind of jumped on this bandwagon for a little while, a few years ago, and hopped on the trend of like, that, that Tumblr was really driving, Tumblr was popular at the time, and when you publish something on your Tumblr feed, you could designate what type of thing you were publishing, like a video or a link or an article or whatever it was, and that trend was really popular and Tumblr was rising in popularity, and WordPress was like, okay, let's do that too, uh, except it was never done really, really well, and it was also kind of a phase, and so it never really got much usage in WordPress, and eventually they took it out. So one, one. nobody really misses it, because it wasn't that popular. Um, you're totally ostracized if anything plays audio automatically on your website, don't do that. Um, XML RPC kind of was a big deal, and that was the way that you would connect remotely with a WordPress site. Like the WordPress app has existed for a long time, and that was powered by XML RPC. And that's, that's a protocol for uh, connecting remotely to a WordPress site. So ever, you never have an application, like a mobile app or, or some third party app where it needs to connect to your WordPress site. Formerly, that was driven always by XML RPC. That was the only thing available. But now we have a JSON REST API in WordPress as of a year or two ago. And that's much more elegant and easy to use and more comprehensive. And so there's virtually no use for the XML RPC feature in WordPress anymore. Uh, nobody really misses it either. Um, in the early days of WordPress, it was uh, necessary for you to go to when you bought a commercial product, like a plugin or a theme, you would have to manually go and renew, but now everybody uses subscriptions. Those are, those are much more popular, so you're auto-renewing. Um, permissionless tracking is now not such uh, an easy thing to get away with, because we have legislation that has been passed which requires you to get explicit permission from any user you decide to track. Uh, most importantly, this is coming from the European Union, uh, they passed the GDPR legislation. A lot of us are familiar with that right now. So that's a really big deal and requires us to get explicit permission from users before we track anything, before we save any personally identifiable information uh, regarding them. Uh, but this does just apply to doing business with anybody that resides or is from or has anything to or has ever been to or has ever even thought of the European Union. Um, it's very far reaching legislation. Uh, but we can't at this point, um, unfortunately, just limit ourselves to thinking about uh, Europeans because other legislation is in the work, you know, in the works in other places. So they're really just the first to pass this. Um, so GDPR like uh, laws are coming in other places as well. And, uh, and Parallax was a fun phase that got a little bit out of hand. Uh, probably used a little bit, a little, just a little bit too much. Kind of a cool effect when multiple things are scrolling on the page at different, different speeds and overlapping. Uh, but as is the case with a lot of design trends online, they get started, uh, they, people start to use them just because they can, just because it's a popular trend, not because it actually contributes in any way. Now, let's move into the more interesting stuff. Let's talk about some of the things which maybe they are a little bit relevant now, but they've seen their peak, and they're kind of like on the downside. Everybody knew that I was gonna talk about homepage sliders because, <laughs> unfortunately, this horrible trend, this offense against all of us, this, this terrible, terrible uh, phase that the internet went through is not completely over. And frankly, I'm quite sick of talking about this topic. Um, I, I, I have been kind of on a soapbox to try and um, kill the homepage slider for a couple of years now, but they're not quite dead yet, so I have to still encouraging people to uh, strictly enforce a no homepage slider policy. So now you guys are here with me. I am ordering all of you, commanding you, uh, pleading with all of you to enforce this policy. I don't care who your clients are, who your boss is. You put your stake in the ground. We're not doing a homepage slider. End of discussion. 
no, it is not on the table. No, we're not going to talk about it. We're not going to debate this. It is not on the table. Are we understood? Like, <laughs> do you guys get what I'm saying here? It's over. In a couple of years, they'll all be gone, and we can laugh about this. We'll be able to. We'll be able to be like, oh, remember back in 2014, it was really cool to have a homepage slider? <laughs> I'm so glad those days are gone. Uh, but they're not quite yet, so we still, need, we still have work to do to rid the internet of these horrible offenses. As much as Comic Sans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It, it, it's, it's similar, like it got used more than it ever should have. Um, and the fun thing is that um, there are so many other cool things that you can do with a homepage. There's so many. It's one of a hundred ways that you can present your call, primary call to action and information. And uh, I've, I've had people say to me on multiple occasions like, well, if it's not a homepage slider, then what? And um, I'm like, anything, anything. <laughs> uh, there's like a hundred other ways that we could present things that would be more compelling. Um, look, look at the Stripe homepage, it's beautiful. They're, they're pioneers of design. And it's just like simple call to actions on an image, and it is and it's static, and it's not confusing, and nothing moves, okay? That's totally unnecessary. And uh, National Geographic, a highly photography-focused uh, organization, Still, it doesn't have anything that moves. Okay, it doesn't need to move. That doesn't help anybody. People hate that. Non-SSL websites are definitely on their way out. Um, for a while, this was kind of hard, and, and we were only using an SSL certificate on specific websites, like those that we had e-commerce on, uh, or we were like collecting sensitive information, and we would go to the trouble of like purchasing an SSL certificate and installing it and figuring out how to. Um, apply it to certain parts of our website, and it was kind of a pain in the butt. Okay, we're past all of that. It's 2018 now. SSL certificates are free because of Let's Encrypt. They're bundled, or they're included in almost every like modern host's basic package. They're very easy to install, and you're in big trouble if you don't have them. Uh, browsers are already starting to throw little messages to scare your users and say, uh, this website's not secure. So right now, if you go to a page that has like a login form or any form that a browser thinks should be secured, browsers are going to be throwing this in the URL bar. They're going to be saying, website not secure. And this is gonna scare your users away. And this is just one step that browsers are taking to push users to push you to get SSL everywhere. All right, there are other benefits to SSL, but just take my word for it. Uh, you have to have them on every website, basically, at this point. And that's just the way it is. Um, zip files, like, back in the day, it was necessary, and it still kind of is, when you want to install something from a third party on your site, you would have to go to their site and, and buy it, obtain it in some way, and then download the zip file then to your computer, and then go to your website and upload it. And uh, that's kind of lame. So a lot of people are working on much better, more elegant ways to install things remotely from third-party sources. Uh, we're, we're working on this too for some of our plugins. Um, back in 2004, this is like the early WordPress.org homepage. Uh, and a year or two later, like the plugins page was introduced. Like this is, this is the time when you had to go and like download WordPress the, itself, the zip file and you would go to your host, and there was the famous five minute install, which was neat at the time, and now it's totally archaic, it's a joke. It's one click everywhere. Um, and then, like I said, a couple years after that, there was a separate site for plugins, a uh, super cool website, and that was where you could navigate to all the plugins that existed in like a long, unordered list. And you could click on any of them, download the zip file for them, and then you could go and manually install them. But now we've got, uh, much better solutions, like we have shiny updates, and you can do this like, this is everything that's coming from the official WordPress.org directory. You could do this in line, like look at that, no page was reloaded, no zip was ever seen, uh, like a connection was just made between your website and WordPress.org, and the package was delivered and installed on your server, and you didn't have to touch it. So this is the direction that everything is going. It's very elegant for the relationship between your site and WordPress.org right now, uh, but it's becoming much more elegant as well for third parties where you can obtain themes and plugins. And I think a day will come and the 
not so distant future where you will never have to see zip files and no one will miss that time. Shortcodes are on their way out. We've got a new editor in the works. Yeah, uh, nobody's gonna actually miss shortcodes, which is kind of funny because they're a big deal right now. They're a huge part of what we do. So much of the functionality of the most popular features in WordPress and in the most popular WordPress plugins are completely driven by shortcodes right now. Uh, and 100% reliant. Some of, the, some of the biggest WordPress plugins right now, like WooCommerce and Gravity Forms, all of these, they like completely rely on shortcodes. But in a very short period of time, you will never be seeing shortcodes at all because we're moving towards blocks. And this is great. It's gonna be a better experience than shortcodes. Shortcodes actually kind of suck. They're a stupid experience. Uh, people have to understand the syntax and they look cryptic and confusing inside of the editor. Uh, people don't inherently know what they do and there's no standardization, all shortcodes, everybody, it's like the wild west. Uh, one person may use a very convoluted series of parameters to feed their shortcode and another may just have like one single word or another may have a series of interconnected nested shortcodes uh, because there's very little standardization and shortcodes are almost too easy to create so they're quite abused by developers. And uh, they have this issue where like if you turn off whatever is powering that shortcode, then just like the square bracket and text appears on your front end showed to your users, uh, which is a frustrating experience. People feel locked into a, uh, to a solution. And this is why blocks uh, are designed to function quite differently. So blocks, uh, just like as a, as a quick technical sidebar, blocks are powered by HTML comments, which means if something is powering a block on your site and uh, that something gets turned off, then nothing will show to your end users. It will just be the, the content itself. And so we won't have this issue of ever going to front end pages and seeing like event calendar shortcode or, or a gravity form shortcode. Um, that was why that decision was made to use HTML comments instead. And it, it has some logic to it. Uh, so in WordPress version 5.0, which is coming before too long, uh, we're going to have a very different editor experience given to us. And shortcodes will be almost irrelevant, not completely quite yet, but almost. So developers are the ones who have to get their act together and kind of migrate their functionality to blocks so users will be able to find and use them. End users just using their site as a disclaimer don't really have to worry about much of anything. Uh, another fun trend for a few years has been using background videos and that I think also got a little bit of views. It's really fun to just like have this background video to make your, your company look cool that just like have us writing on a whiteboard in some tech office and then like chatting with each other in a conference room and pouring an espresso. Um, all of that was really cool and made you look awesome, right? Uh, except everybody was kind of doing it and it didn't contribute anything to the experience for users and it was quite distracting. Um, so this was a trend that also got out of hand and thankfully is now uh, not as popular as it once was. Um, updating software is kind of a sucky experience and nobody likes it. Um, Thankfully, WordPress is kind of moving slowly in a direction, as all, just about all software, moving in a direction where manually having to update the software isn't or won't be necessary. So this is the future that we're looking forward to, um, exemplified by this one of my favorite tweets ever, um, where Hillary <laughs> says, <laughs> being an adult is just clicking this every day forever until you die. Um, because this is the case. Like, software updates are stupid. It's a horrible experience you are presented with the opportunity to like up, uh, like restart your device at the exact moment when you're using that device. So you definitely don't want to do it. No, there's actually never a good time to restart your device and like not be able to use it. This is, and there's never a good time to like take your site temporarily offline for an update. That is not a, a thing that exists. So um, everybody's working hard to try and move to a time where updates are kind of done transparently in the background and safely. And a few years ago, we did successfully move in WordPress to introducing minor releases 
uh, transparent, automatic in the background. Major releases still require you to push a button to accept the update and install it. Someday, maybe you won't have to. I, I think that would be the case. And that would be great. There's a lot of other software like, uh, like web browsers that you use. Those actually update in the background. So you, none of you even know what version you're running. You don't have to push a button to accept the update. You don't have to restart anything. All right. Every industry kind of follows the same, follows the same trajectory as it grows. Every industry without exception, and WordPress is definitely no exception. Every industry starts highly consolidated because there are very few players. Every industry starts here and then goes down in the consolidation flow. So in the beginning, there are very few players in an industry. If you want a product or a service, there's only a few choices to go to because nobody's playing in this market yet. It's very small. But as the industry grows, you begin to get a lot more choices. So we go down in the fragmentation uh, chart. So the industry becomes highly fragmented. There are many providers, all providing essentially the same thing. Many people selling virtually the same plugins and virtually the same themes and virtually the same services. A highly fragmented market, many players, all small, all doing essentially the same thing. As the market matures, every industry begins to gradually consolidate more. What happens is some of the more successful players in the industry start to grow and they start to become more competitive, competitive and stronger. Some of the smaller players begin to fail or slip out or join the more larger companies or find it harder to compete with the ones who are more successful and more established. And then the industry continues to be further consolidated as those companies continue to get bigger and begin to buy or merge with, acquire, or take over uh, other players in the market. So the next thing you know, your number of choices for providers, be it products or services, begins to go down. It becomes a slightly smaller number. <coughs> WordPress is still like going up in this consolidation space, uh, in, in this consolidation flow, where it's still a very highly fragmented market, but we are seeing a lot of signs of it beginning to consolidate. And every industry always will follow this. Every industry will eventually get to a, a point where it's very highly consolidated. You can think of probably some industries where no matter what, you're going to be um, working with one of a, only a handful of providers. Uh, maybe like, uh, like wireless, uh, your, your cell phone providers, or soft drinks, and so on. Highly consolidated because they're very mature markets. You only have a few choices in the end. WordPress is a long way from being like that, but consolidation is occurring because some of the big companies are beginning to get much bigger and now it is much harder than it was years ago for new entrants to the market to be competitive and disrupt. So if you enter as a small agency or you enter as a new like e-commerce plugin or a new forms plugin or a new theme shop right now, it's a lot harder for you to compete than it was a few years ago when the industry was highly fragmented. Now you are playing against big boys and girls, uh, very established companies who have much deeper pockets, huge teams, investment backing, and uh, strong partners. So you're competing against really difficult uh, competition. So this is, uh, this is something that um, the point is, uh, we are not going to be seeing a fragmented market as much as we were. Kind of the, the early easy days where you could throw up something and it would be successful without much effort are a little bit behind us for this space. What? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, PHP. How do you guys feel about that? It's not as popular as it once was. <laughs> I'm not actually thrilled about this because PHP, I think, is easy. PHP is an easy language to learn as far as programming languages go. I think JavaScript is hard as it can be. It's, I think it's super hard. It makes no sense to me. PHP is really easy. But PHP is losing. It's definitely losing the battle. But it's not going down fast. PHP is continuing to evolve and continuing to even get better. But the web is changing fundamentally and it's changing in ways 
that mean PHP just won't work. It's changing in ways that PHP can't solve, only JavaScript can solve. This is just because the web itself is changing. The demands of the web, the websites that are needed in 2018 and beyond are websites that just can't be built with PHP no matter how good it gets. Because we're looking for websites that are more like web applications, in-browser applications, with views instead of pages. We can look at stats and see that obviously, you know, PHP is going down, that's the blue line in terms of Google search trends, which isn't the strongest indicator for uh, the point that I'm making, but we do see a little bit of change over time. This is the last five years in, in interest from the public. We do see things like, um, these are job postings. So we see 16, 17, 18 continuing to decrease in rank uh, job citing PHP, the number of decreasing, uh, so the market is asking for fewer PHP developers as each year passes. It's still very useful. If you want to learn PHP, do it. It's still going to be useful for quite some time because so much of the web is powered by PHP. It's the only programming language designed specifically to uh, power websites and work online. And a huge swath of the web is driven by it, more than, more than really any other one language. But it's going down because what the web needs now and in the future can only be done with JavaScript. I think the hosting industry is changing quite a lot and I've heard this directly from hosting companies who say that as time goes on uh, you're going to see much and much less of the hosting that we've been used to. Uh, like traditional, like you go and you buy a slice of a server and you do whatever you want on that. Maybe you have cPanel or WHM uh, and, and maybe you use um, SSH to manage your server. Like that's gonna be pretty niche. But what people are looking for is, a, is <coughs> not hosting, they're looking for a website. So hosts are evolving a little bit to become more like platforms on which you can get a website. And to do this, Hosts are rapidly iterating and developing kind of their own solutions. So instead of like getting a piece of a web server and some credentials and have fun, uh, you're getting buttons to like add your site and what's your site called and get started. Very friendly experience. This is what we used to see. Uh, like when I was getting started, I was encountering this same cPanel on every single host because they were all just running this. Uh, but now we go to like some modern house like this for just one example go daddy has this an experience like this When you sign up for the hosting account you see not that crazy C panel with like a million and one Options that you don't understand you see just like a button that says add site There you go. Okay, that, I think I can manage this. I'm not too confused or overwhelmed by this and uh, very custom experiences this is the WP engines uh, dashboard experience, which looks nothing like cPanel, is completely bespoke, and has a, a lot of uh, features which are tailored towards this specific use case, like someone want, running high performance WordPress. And, uh, and this is a, a very highly customized dashboard that Peter probably contributes to in some way for A2 hosting, which is very different than the traditional C, uh, cPanel hosts that we've seen in the past. So web hosts are migrating a little bit gradually towards more like a SaaS model, more like where you're, with a few clicks, setting up a website, as opposed to like getting uh, a piece of property on the internet with which to build whatever you want. That's what the market wants, and that's what hosts are beginning to deliver. Privacy is kind of going away. I don't know, do we need to talk about that? Here's the thing, privacy, is going to lose because consumers always choose convenience. It's an, it's an unfair competition. <laughs> Historically, we the consumer always choose convenience when it's against any other value proposition. We always will. We'll choose convenience over quality, we'll choose convenience over cost, uh, and we'll choose it over privacy too. And the thing is, convenience and privacy are at direct odds against each other online right now. 
because we as website providers or builders or web experience providers, whatever you want to call us, uh, we want to provide, hopefully, good experiences to our end users. And in order for us to provide good experiences, we absolutely have to have some data about them. We have to know something. We have to know what they want and, and who they are and, and what their preferences are. So we have to collect some sort of information in order to provide that good experience. And then we, you know, if you want to have one-click checkout like Amazon provides, you have to give Amazon your information. It's as simple as that. If you want, when you log into a website, for them to present it just in the language that you speak and read, you know, you have to provide them with information about you, so that when you log in, that's already saved, it's already presented, and you don't have to do this every time. If you want to just have a record of your past purchases so you can refer back to them or the things that you've listened to and the things that you've watched so you can refer back to that or you want to get good recommendations for the things you might like based on what you've done before or you want to streamline any process so that it's faster the second and third time you try and do it which we do want we do appreciate that convenience imagine imagine if you sat down to like watch Netflix and you had to just like log in every time on the stupid remote and like type in your credentials every time, and it didn't save anything, like your favorites or your uh, recently watched, or what episode of Orange is the New Black you're watching right now. What if it didn't save any of that? That would be the worst. That'd be stupid. But they do save information. They do. And we love it. We live by that. But it's at direct odds against privacy. They have to collect information in order for them to provide a good, convenient experience. And historically, convenience always wins. It always does. Um, physical media has value. It's fun and cool. There are like real benefits to like owning your media, your DVDs, your CDs, your cassettes. Um, but that's also in direct odds with convenience. And convenience wins every time. So we're always going to pick the more convenient option. And that's why for music, Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, Amazon, uh, iTunes and so forth. And for movies, we're now going to be, is that a question or time? I just want to say as a librarian, I concur with this. Oh, you agree. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Someone agrees with me? That's good. That's good. Thank you. Uh, and for movies, you know, we're watching Hulu and Netflix and, and Amazon Prime and whatever, HBO and all that. Uh, because it's, it's, so, it's infinitely more convenient to just pay one time instead of a bunch of times and to have one place instead of a bunch of places and to be able to access everything with a couple clicks of a button instead of shuffling through shelves and, and boxes and, and playing with disks. There's value to those physical things. Like you get to own it and you never have to pay again. And you can do whatever you want with it. You can even sell it if you want to. It's yours, it's your thing. Uh, there are real benefits to having physical media, but it loses, it's gonna lose. It's already losing. Uh, Subscription-based media wins in this battle. Commutes are on their way out. Nobody's gonna miss commutes. Commutes are dumb, waste of time. And so a lot of companies are now kind of catching on to this thing that like, hey, you know what? Some of our people don't actually need to be here to get their work done. They're kind of catching on. The market's a little slow. There's a lot of old school industries who haven't caught up yet, but they are. And remote work is becoming a really big deal. And we're going towards this time where the majority of the work um, community will be getting to work wherever they need to be in order to be as productive as they can be. And if that's in an office, or at a cash register, uh, or at a coffee shop, or a co-working station, or at their own home, it doesn't matter. Wherever you need to be to be productive is where you're gonna end up working. This is like where a lot of industries are slowly going. Some of them are really, really slowly getting there. Some of them may never really uh, change very much because it's truly necessary for someone to be present but a lot of other industries have a huge percentage of their staff on site when they technically don't need to be and they're slowly catching up on this web pages are kind of uh, a concept that we will not be thinking about as much anymore in the future when we started building websites uh, some of us who have been selling websites for a long time remember the days when we charged by the page. That's fun, right? Did, did anybody ever do this back in the day? Charge by the page? Just Ross? Okay. Well, I, I mean, I did too. Uh, and we were charging like really cheap, like 
hundred bucks a page or something silly. You want that extra contact page or the page about your services? Well, it's a little more money. Uh, and that was pretty silly. Uh, we're, we're past that at least, but the very concept of web pages online is evolving a little bit because we're moving up in a direction towards views. Now, when, you, when you're using a very popular websites online, like, like a social media site, when you go to post a new tweet, you don't go to the new tweet page. You don't navigate to that. You click the new tweet button, and, uh, and you get this. You can post a new tweet. It's like in line. And it, you don't even think about the page that you're on. It never crosses your mind what the URL might be to this. You're interacting with this application. And this is the view for composing and submitting a new tweet. And so eventually, WordPress will be very similar to this. You know, they're like, right now, um, you go to the add new post page. But eventually, that won't be as applicable. You will be working in the editor, but you will not be as concerned about what the URL is. Uh, we migrated this similarly, like there used to be, this used to be the only way to manage your menus in WordPress for a long time, the menus page. So you could navigate to this URL and you would get this page and you would think I'm on the menus page, but now this isn't actually the best way to manage your menus. Now uh, it's done not easy to see, but on this side of the page, it's done in the customizer. All right, so over here on the right, you are on the front end of your website, and you open the customizer, and you can view the front end of your site, and you can view in real time the changes that you make be reflected on your site. So you click through, and you rearrange these items, and you see it rearranged on the front end of your website, and you're not thinking at, ever at any point what page you're on. And if you had to get here, you would follow the, uh, the clicks to get there, to interact with this application to do the thing. So we're thinking more about interacting with web applications and the views than we are about the pages that we're on. <clears throat> Just like you know, if you're using if you're using Google Docs, for example, you never think about the pages. You think about the views. If you want to open up like a, a modal to interact with something, like find new fonts, um, you just do that you, in, within the application and follow the the um, defined experience. But you don't navigate to like the add new font page. Uh, so pages are, are are kind of a concept that is diminishing in significance. And I'm out of time. Let's be friends. My name's Kyle. That's all.